Hey, what's going on guys? Tony here, CCXRC, and on the bench today we've got the Low C 5T 2.0. We're getting ready to install the Super B gas kill switch by Killer RC. And uh, we've got over here the instructions that came with it. Tells us how to set it up. We're going to try and follow what uh, RC Sparks had done several years ago uh, when he did it, which was to just take off this shroud right here. That's uh, basically only one screw to remove instead of having to take out the whole flywheel and everything to get in and remove this kill switch. So we're going to start by taking out our spark plug. Then there's one screw on here. Looks like it's just a standard old uh, Phillips screw. So I'm going to grab one of our screw guns here, pull this out, and then we should be able to get in here and see the wires that we have to deal with to put the new kill switch in. So as you can see, we've got here the new kill switch that we're going to install. I'm going to remove the yellow one that's in there. And uh, this has another cable that's going to run over to our setup that will go into our receiver box and then power all of this. So it's got a little beeper switch and everything. Let us know what we're going. So it seems pretty simple. Uh, as long as we can avoid having to uh, take off all the flywheel and everything. So looks like they may have added some more extra screws here on this version that may have to come off. Maybe these two here have to come off as well. You got a couple extra screws on this model. There we go. I've only run it a couple times because I didn't want to run it for too long without the kill switch in it. I've seen too many videos already in my short time watching all this fifth scale of uh, cars running away. So you can see the buildup that we've already got in here. So I'm actually going to put the spark plug back in for a second. Just hand tighten it. Try and keep anything from getting in to the motor as I clean it out here a little bit and just remove some of this little toothbrush I'm just going to use. Probably would also work well with like a paintbrush or something like that. Just something with bristles to get in here and kind of break some of this junk free. Let's see, okay, it looks like I can see the cables in here for the most part. What I'm gonna have to pull free from the old kill switch. Alright, red and the black is where's the black? I'm going to have to take this off. Looks like I will be taking off the flywheel case as well. Just so I can get a better look at what we're dealing with here. So go ahead and take out a few Allens here. Actually just that little bit gives me a visual. And kind of see where I've got to get in there now. I might be able to use some needle nose pliers to get that in. Let's try the black one now. There's the black one. Now I say the polarity doesn't really matter for these. So we're going to see if we can't line this up and just wedge it down there so I don't have to take off the whole flywheel. Now I see why Medic turned off for this part. <laughs> there it is, way down there. Way down there. I think I'm over it. He's a long screwdriver here. So we can't just push it on there. Oh, we've got it. It's going. Now I just gotta push it down. Oh yeah. Alright. 
Now, this one should be a lot easier. Normally I would think I would use needle nose for this, but it's kind of tight. I'm just going to try and use this flathead to get it on. There we go. And that is on. Cool. Alright, so that wasn't too bad. I thought it was going to be awful. Snaps into place there. So, we're going, to, we're 12 minutes in now, guys. Not too bad. We'll get an idea how long this is going to take us. Including the cleaning. <laughs> and this is where these uh, rounded hexes come in handy is you can go in at an angle like that with these kind of rounded heads so it's very very handy in tight spaces like this I've actually still got the battery in here I was bad before I went on my trip and I did not come in here and unplug the battery which is something I never do so we'll have to check that out it's off, but the battery's still plugged in on this side. So we'll have to run it and see what kind of power we have. I keep my Venom lipo checker so we can just give it a quick test and see what kind of voltage we have. 407. Total is 8.15 volts, so we're not too bad. All this is good. This is tightened back up. We need to put the shroud back on here. So gonna see if I can't. I'm just going to take this out and make it easier for me. Take the spark plug back out. Now we're going to slide this back in place. There it goes. That is not the easiest thing in the world. Not the hardest thing either. There we go. Just put these couple screws back in here. Two. The thing we need to do is put the, for this part of it at least, step one, the last part we need to do is Put our spark plug back in. And good. There we go. Now I'm going to uh, flip the car around and work the other side. Because I've already watched the RC Sparks video about this, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to flip this up. And we're going to take out these few Allens here on the bottom side to let the uh, battery tray drop out. Going the old school way here. So it gives us a lot more room there, but somehow I gotta get this cable to push underneath the car. I'm gonna move some of my extra stuff off of here. There we go, now we're talking. All right, so we've got it to go right underneath the middle of the motor in here. And so I'm going to use my screwdrivers, kind of pull this out to the side here. So I can work it underneath this battery box. We should be golden and have a whole lot more. There we go. Now we've got a whole lot more clearance here with that coming out right by our receiver box. I need to grab a couple things because I also need to put in this transponder. So we're going to open up our box here for the receiver. It's already really tight in here. I've got a couple of extra auxes, so we're going to put this on one. Let's see, it's just going to go here. So we're definitely going to have to cut off this tab. 
on the side. So I know that's a given with these uh, uh, spectrum receivers. Let me see here. Don't have a lot of room with this big car. Makes this workbench really small very quick. Just gonna slowly shave this because I've shaved them too far before. And that's not fun. Should got an exacto knife to do this. This was sharp enough. Alright, so putting our aux. Alright, so I went ahead and put in the three uh, screws on the bottom to hold the battery tree in. I also just went and uh, tried this again and thought about putting it in sideways like this. And it looks like I should be able to button this whole thing up with the kill switch inside like so inside of that tray and be good to go. That might be a little bit tight on those wires. I might need to trim that a little bit more. It looks like I'm going to go ahead and pop this one more time. I just feel like I'm kind of crimping those wires. So I'm just going to shave this a little bit further down. And it'll still, I mean, it's not going to be submersible waterproof, but for the most part, that's going to keep most moisture that I need to be kept out of the box, out of the box. If I really wanted, I could put a seal, a little bead of marine grease or something around that. But I also just need to make sure that these wires aren't like crisscrossing like they were. Because that doubles the height. So that feels better. Now I'll just screw this into the little tray here and we're good to go. Just need to find a couple of small little screws. All right, well, the uh, I don't have any screws small enough for now, so I'm just going to go ahead and clean this off with some isopropyl alcohol. This is great for cleaning and uh, putting stickers on. And so since I'm going to double side tape this, I'm going to clean with this in here also dries very quickly which is great and I'm gonna put my double-sided tape on and we'll just stick it in here for now all right so we're wrapping up the install here with the uh, super B kill switch and uh, one of the things that I had to do was switch the uh, voltage cutoff since I'm running a 2s lipo this came with it set to 5 volt cutoff, which is for 2S Life batteries, and they said 6 amber flashes is for uh, 2S LiPo. So during the first 5 seconds that it's on, it's flashing the color here. Zoom in a little bit for you guys. All right, so I'm going to turn it off, and you'll see it's now going to flash amber 6 times, because when it turns on during that time that it's flashing, it was at 5, I needed to go up 1 more to six amber flashes so I did the one switch here down and up one time and if I would go down and up two times I would reset back to just one amber flash uh, because it just keeps adding on and so during that time we can show you here now it's doing six amber flashes and then a green flash but if I were to now change this here it's kind of tricky in the amount of time that you have in that five seconds I'm going to use this to flip the switch uh, so we're going to flip it on, I'm going to go down and up, down and up, down and up, and we'll see what we're at this time. I've now added on, so it's going to be a little bit different. So I went to just five. <clears throat> so I'm going to do it one more time here, and I'm going to go down and up. Whoops, I did not get it. Down, up. So now it should go six. Two, three, four, five, six to green from five. 
So basically you just have to flip that switch up and down and it'll cycle through either three amber flashes, four, five, or six. And um, you'd cycle through that with the up and down. Anyway, uh, so that's set. And I want both of mine up because I want it to be both active, aux active, kill switch active. I'm plugged into my channel too, so on my spectrum, I have it set up here on this front button here. It's the C button. And so I use the online manual. They tell you what controllers there are available. And so in mine, I had to go in and choose uh, to set the system. And I chose switch C. And I have it at aux 2 at three position switch. And that just gives me like one safety, I think, hit. So you have to actually hit it twice to turn it off. So if I show you now, instead of it just being an accidental hit, maybe when I'm driving, I have to actually hit twice and it'll go off. If I hit it once, it'll stay off. But if I hit it again, it'll turn back on. So if I'm driving and I accidentally hit that, it's gonna keep driving. So I have that little fail safe in there, even on the fail safe to kill the motor. So that's how, that's how I have mine set up, guys. Anyway, it's not been too bad. It took about 30 minutes to get everything installed. Add an extra 10 minutes for uh, messing around with the controller and this setup to make sure I had everything working. We're at about a 40 minute install for me to do that. I've cut some of it out uh, just in editing, but that's the amount of time that it took me. Uh, some of you guys could probably do it faster, but I was trying to figure out how all this worked as I was doing it, and so, um, with me getting the batteries and all the little things, every extra step that I did, still in total, we're at about 40 minutes, which isn't too bad, guys. So, anyway, thanks for tuning in. If you like these type of videos, be sure to let us know in the comments below. If you have any tips for me as I'm new to this, be sure to, uh, to let me know in the comments below as well. I did see that um, they make an adapter that you can run wiring and actually install it here in the battery tray for these low C5s. Uh, I did not see that until I had already done my little rig here. So I'm gonna stick with it. I don't actually have the piece anyway to change it at the moment. And so since it kind of fits in here, I'm just gonna kind of stick with it. I think this receiver box might be a little bigger than some of the older uh, low C5s. So I might have a little bit more room in here. But so far that's working all right. I'm actually gonna fire this up and actually take it out and uh, give it a little whirl here in a little bit. But it is raining here and so I can't do that right at the moment. I'm gonna wait for things to dry up so I'm not kicking a bunch of water up and in here uh, as I'm not trying to get this thing all muddy and dirty and all that, so. All right guys, so we just killed this thing. We're gonna show you the, the fail safe working. So we're gonna flip this switch twice. You can hear it beeping. That means that it is, uh, the Super B is working. Flip it back, there we go. And it's uh, now back operational, so it should start up again. Let's give it a quick test here. There it is. And off. One other test we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the controller and see if it stops. Controller's off, it just killed itself. We're good to go. We'll fire it back on. The beeping stops. We can fire it back up. Things awesome. Time we're gonna shut it off with the controller. And done. Beautiful. Okay guys, there you have it. I have now got the kill switch installed. Uh, here by Killer RC. This is the Super B kill switch for these gas engines. Um, wasn't too bad to install. It took me about 40 minutes all said and done to get it in here. That includes me messing around with the battery and then uh, getting the controller all set up, jumping on their website to find the settings for mine in particular and uh, getting it set up so that it was set to uh, six amber flashes for 2C LiPo batteries since that's what I'm running in here. 
But I, if you guys enjoy this, uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. Give me some tips. As I said, I don't know anything about these gas-powered RCs. I am new to this. I have plenty of experience now with uh, the electric RCs. And so any tips that you guys have, I still need to get the, uh, the cover here for the air filter. Um, still not super dirty yet, so I'm going to go ahead and run this a little bit longer. I'll do a little clean on it, get it back on until I get a, a cover for this. So uh, if you guys have recommendations that will fit this particular air filter on this uh, Low C 2.0, let me know. Um, because, I, again, I've seen a bunch of them and there's different types of air filters. So if you uh, know the exact model number and want to tell me, I'll go ahead and pick one of them up. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. Have fun, RC, and we'll catch you next time.